this session was supposed to be called Level Up Learning with uh, Jeremiah, who initially asked me the other day, he said, oh, I'm doing this session, would you come up and, and you know, speak a little bit about what you're doing at my session? And I said, sure. And then he wrote me and said, I'm actually not going to make it, would you take over the session? So, so here we are. <laughs> so we, we, um, we decided to hijack it with um, something very, that I'm very passionate about, and as our, our panelists, and some of you may either be passionate about it, or hopefully after this you will be. But um, the main thing you know, we're kind of talking about is um, eSports and primarily building the K-12 to college eSports pipeline. Um, so another kind of self-serving aspect of this presentation is I really wanted to have a conversation with Constance and Kurt about what they're doing at UCI and how we can work together. So we'll engage you all in that conversation as well. Um, so the hashtag that we use is eSportsEDU. So anyway, eSportsEDU is the, <laughs> the hashtag that we use for a Twitter chat that we have on Thursday nights at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we're taking a little break till, till mid-August. Um, and anybody here participate in Twitter chats at all? A little bit? OK. Um, our intent here was to have a half-hour chat once a week, pretty much one question or one topic, and just bring the community together. Our whole goal right now is building that community of people that are desperately wanting to either share what they're doing in esports or break into esports. Um, so that's our story. And we also have a Discord community, uh, bit.ly slash esportsedu, that we'd encourage you all to join. It's a great resource uh, repository and conversation hub. And now I'm going to kind of bring us out of here. And if all is going well, we uh, are live with our Twitter chat. Um, so we kind of decided to have a quick Twitter chat here while we're here as well. So we're going to have a couple of questions. But um, first, I'll just introduce kind of quickly, we have uh, Kurt Squire here, who many of you might know, um, who uh, is at UCI. And he and, and Constance and many others there have built an amazing, or are building or growing an amazing esports program. I was able to visit their uh, esports arena and um, was quite jealous and want to live there. Um, and we have uh, Tristan Miller, who is an elementary, now turning to high school teacher who, uh, along with me in New Jersey, are passionate about bringing esports to schools. Um, Liz Newberry has done, and hopefully she'll share about it, because I wouldn't know too much about it, but she's doing tremendous research in the area of esports. And uh, Dylan Tomary um, is sort of a, a mentor and role model for Tristan and I, because he has an existing you know, program going right now in his school in uh, upstate New York. OK, and now this might be our first question. Let's see. Nope, not yet. But um, anyway, maybe uh, what I, my main question, or one thing I want just a really brief uh, you know, five, two-minute pitch on is what um, Kurt and Constance and Sam Anton and the others have done at, uh, at UC Irvine and with the Orange County schools. If you could just kind of share a little bit of what's happening there. Sure. So, so I need this? Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I need it. Yeah, so I mean, some of this work really predates when we got here. I know a lot of you, you know, we were at Wisconsin a couple years ago. Um, one of the things that really attracted us to UCI um, was this, um, the, the role that games plays across campus and within the community. Um, a lot of the arguments that many of us have had in these rooms about trying to argue for the importance and cultural relevance just, just don't happen there in the same way. It's kind of taken for granted. So um, UCI has uh, a very robust uh, esports program. We have 10 full-time scholarship athletes. So for I think two or three years running now, there are students who come to campus on scholarship to play esports. They have competitive tryouts. It's a, it's a, it's a really competitive program and scene. Um, and as we were watching that work, we started taking an interest in what would it mean to roll this out into high schools? How can we develop those college to high school relationships? And how can we do it in such a way that really promotes ac kind of academic content and or academic dispositions? And what I mean by that is could we roll it out in a way that helps take the parts of, of esports that we think have value, um, both in terms of some of the STEM practices that go into it, like reasoning with data, argumentation, then also some of the other dispositions. So something I've learned recently while playing some games is that you need to like not tilt if you're playing games, for example. So you need to keep your cool, keep mm. your pack together. There's a kind of social emotional learning that goes into being a competitive esports athlete that is a really interesting learning opportunity. So something we've been exploring with this league are, are 
can we bring in coaching mechanisms? Can we build in curriculum? Um, can we build in different experiences that will take help take kids interested in esports, help them become better esports athletes by um, by uh, de developing and strengthening their uh, say regulatory skills and so on, but then also some of their more academic skills. And we're seeing and constant we'll talk more about this. We're seeing some indicators that that is happening. So we're seeing some signs in some cases of kids uh, stronger affiliation towards school, more uh, completing more homework, greater attendance, and it's. Um, she'll talk more about it. So some of the reasons you might anticipate. So doing well in this activity, seeing that validated by school, uh, hearing your name on the announcements, mm. doing a good job. Then also, why don't you care great to, to, to stay competitive? So some of it's like the way traditional sports have gone, but some of it's unique to esports as well. There's some things about the types of problem solving, um, the types of sort of like working with nonfiction text that you have to do to read to stay on top of things. That's maybe a little unique. Yeah, interesting. And I, I know one of our thoughts is, and it's in, it, I know that there's an academic piece with the STEM part of your program, and then there's also that side, like, are we trying to um, allow esports to be perceived on the same level as, like, varsity sport? And I mean, you know, my feeling is, is yes, that would be the goal. Um, I imagine in the research uh, funding and things, there's a piece of it where, you know, it has to tie to certain... Yeah, we're seeing it. We're seeing that sometimes it's important for just logistical reasons. So many of the districts in Orange County, kids will have either a zero period or an after school mm -hmm. period where they get some sort of credit for doing something in, in other clubs or other sports. And so that's a case where being a sanctioned sport would be important. Right. Um, but we're also doing some other curricular experiences like creating courses that have um, English, that meet English standards that are built around these mm -hmm. sports so kids can also be exposed to those. So there are um, a lot of things that we're doing. and, and it, in some ways, in some ways, it's like building the car and researching mm -hmm. as it's going in real time. Because this this project started like a year ago, and now we are ready to uh, start publishing. So. Right. Awesome. Um, I believe we Adrian's uh, one of the uh, schools that's in in your in your group, which yeah, is awesome. We've been talking. Talk oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> We've been talking a little. We've been plotting. Um, and actually, you know, fun is, so now our challenge, and and we would love to lean to you for getting over the hump that we're all at, which is kind of the desperately wanting, like I have a game club at my school and I wanna to get to that next level. And, and you know, it's like, I just feel like that's where we're kind of like um, a little bit stalled. But um, Dylan can maybe share a little bit about the experiences, and I'm kind of going away from the questions because we're just gonna have a good conversation here. But uh, Dylan, and you can answer these questions though as they come up. Uh, we're talking about legit legitimizing esports, and I think Kurt answered to that as well with all the different you know um, academic areas but Dylan if you could share a little bit about it. I know you've had a few experiences uh, a year and a half so far yeah so we have uh, set still at the stage of gaming club it's not, uh, it's not affiliated with the athletic department in any way but we had two and a half years uh, but the first year and a half was actually seniors coming to me to try to get things going and one of the things that I noticed uh, this year actually was that with that senior group they graduate, so they move on. And what we hadn't done well enough is promote to get the next phase of player coming through. So this year it turns into a little bit of a bump to be able to kind of pick it back up and try to get the next group to come through. Uh, to partly because maybe we didn't just we just didn't focus enough on that because the team was going well, and then all yeah. of a sudden they left. Yeah. So. So the next phase for us going into next year is to get that momentum going again. Um, but something that is quite clear is that the students have to be um, passionate and invested in it to make it work. Um, and that's been quite clear for us. So that's what we're moving on to as the next phase of next year. And you know, thinking about that too, um, you know, we're talking. You know, question two here is about barriers, and I know that's probably where Tristan and I are kind of right now. Um, Tristan, what are you? What are your thoughts on on getting started? You know, in the school where you are, and you know how that might look. Yeah, this year I was an elementary teacher. I was teaching three to five coding, and I start. I do a lot of clubs. One of the clubs I was really passionate about was this board game club because I love board games too. Is in addition to video games, and I thought, oh, maybe I'll get twenty or thirty kids. You know, the most who are interested in board games these days. I had almost half the school sign up. <laughs> One hundred fifty kids. And it was overwhelming. And they said, and, and the ones who didn't sign up, it was mostly because they had soccer or dancing or whatever. They came in tears. I really wanted to be in the club. So, uh, absolutely, we have to start young. 
you know, I think we could start in kindergarten and first grade, just getting kids together and playing games as a social activity and doing it, maybe with some organization and working on these skills like you're talking about, social emotional skills. If we could start that really young, we don't need to focus on high school. If you're getting to high school, you don't have team members just because we didn't do it in middle school, we didn't do it in elementary school. So I think if we just build that whole continuous pipeline where it doesn't have to be this, it doesn't have to be League of Legends. Right. It could be any games, it could be games that they love. Just get them out playing and not sitting at home alone doing it necessarily, but in a, in a supportive school atmosphere. Yeah, um, I'm in the same boat. I have a very popular uh, game club at our level, and from a casual standpoint, it's phenomenal. Um, getting the kids that are truly competitive and ready for that level is a very different story. And you know, so it's like, so you, like my thought initially was I would start with a club and it would morph into this, and I might start to see people, you know, pull out of that into the more competitive. But the general club is perfectly happy just being, you know, which is fine. But our game playing club, you know, um, and Liz, if you could share with us, especially like in in light of the kind of the discussion about the K-12 to college, you know, where your research might fit with that? Yeah, so my research was on esports fandom and uh, understanding why people would sit and watch other people play video games, basically. That was the <laughs> start of it. But one of the things I learned from interviewing fans, from going to fan meetups, is that esports is not a singular experience. It's a hybrid of practice that comes together to be both a player and a fan. So people, like uh, we were talking about, there's a lot of knowledge acquisition. If they're not playing, they're either watching people play to learn more about the game or to learn about the players. They're either reading on Reddit. They're either talking to their friends or co-watching. So there's a lot of different practices that come together in esports, and I think that's one of the benefits for it being in schools is that you have all of this socialization and this team and camaraderie that's coming together. I would say the biggest barrier facing schools though and is the industry itself is still trying to identify what it is. What is esports? How do we define esports? Is what is the spectrum of play? What are the games that are included yep. under that umbrella? And talking to fans, uh, some people consider for example speedrunning an esport, especially if you talk to speedrunners. Um, and then some people don't necessarily consider that an esport. So I think it's that core identity question that we have to understand. And until we can also legitimize that for ourselves, it's not. It's going to be hard. It's a hard barrier to push against. Right. And and on that um, also, I guess kind of taking a pulse of the room. Um, who has you know actively engaged in some degree of esports, whether it be let's say playing competitively yourself. A little bit, okay. Involved with with esports in a scholastic environment, okay. Um, interested or watches esports. More, more people watched um, the League of Legends finals than the seventh game of the NBA in two thousand seventeen. Um, so, how many of you watched the seventh game of the NBA last year? Okay. See, we still. Well, you did both, I guess, or something. Um, uh, and what about people who have no idea and were just either came to the wrong session or are interested remotely in, in what we're talking about? Okay, awesome, awesome. Um, if you have questions as we're going, please don't hesitate because we, yes? So would participants then join eSports for the first time? I was actually using this question earlier. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 They're actually on Twitter. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, for participants that are joining esports for the first time, as they kind of progress in the club, do you see them getting more competitive? Do you see them being uh, staying casual with it? Do you see them want to be more, uh, more where they are watching more competitive players and they don't want to actually participate? What do you kind of see with people that are starting this? Does somebody want to take that? Yeah, uh, a little bit. So something that we noticed when we started the club was that. In general, the team came together much better. Like it, it, it really did develop the team very well because while they were playing, you know, uh, from home, it's when we were able to get all five players. We did uh, League of Legends, so when we get all five players in the same room, it was a different kind of dynamic because they were able to talk to each other and uh, figure it out. And uh, I was able to get uh, get the squad built up to uh, open on a Saturday to play outside for their games. Uh, 
uh, which is which is great. So they didn't have to worry about headsets, didn't have to worry about all that they could be in the same room. And that really did pick up the team work element of it. Uh, and from those games during the week, they're talking about what happened, why did it happen? And just casually, you know, a five minute game here or there, nothing formal. Um, but then that just built over the season. So that was that was a really nice thing to see. Used to saw Brown speak, and they said they already because they already have a team that's very competitive, and they're looking at how do we maintain this, and they were already giving preferential interest, and they started mm-hmm. recruiting Brown anyway. But they're encouraging the Ivy League to create a league. And they they saw themselves at the forefront of every sport; they want to be at the forefront of these sports right. too. So it's not just second tier universities; it's the, the best ones in the country. Yes. You know, one thought that I have is, as we talk about the industry at large, you know, and the program that they were talking about has, you know, when you talk about shout casting, so we're teaching kids to be, you know, um, uh, play-by-play announcers, let's say, for esports. The amount of people that are spectating, um, you know, is becoming astounding. So, in other words, we're at that level where the same, I mean, if you can have a rationale for, let's say, people eventually might make it to professional football, so we should offer football scholarships because there is something out there. Part of me, that's kind of one of the rationales, I think. But also the curriculum tie-ins, tie-ins when you think beyond the just competitive player and the coaching and the strategy and all, and if anybody else can certainly answer. But I think they're, I think we're starting to see when you look at those numbers, it kind of starts to, to speak you know, for itself. What about the money that they can generate? That's too? what, yeah. I mean, they talk about they want football to generate so much money for the university. But what about you know, successful coaching? Mm. Yeah. I mean, some, people, some of these players are making $500,000 a month. Yeah. So, um, right. It seems to me that uh, you see that. So, well, so a couple things. So the the 
competitive program is run by Mark Deppie, who's amazing. He's live right now. Uh, but he did a lot of that groundwork raising funds. Uh, all, all external funds, uh, corporate sponsorship. Or, yeah, corporate sponsorship. So um, that's what the initiative comes from. The university is developing an online, this engine outreach, right? She's developing some online courses. Um, I don't mm -hmm. know if they're having successful those or not. Although our game development program does, which I also teach in just your normal undergraduate, how we grow up as a game developer, that also is pretty robust on campus, and we do have close relationships with them. But they're, they're separate, although it's part of a, of a interrelated thing, how they encompass each other. Yes? Yeah, so I just want to add a comment. We're talking about esports, and we're talking about kind of the elite athletes, the people who can go through and be one of the very, very few who excel in any sport and what to do. Mm -hmm. Part of the league that you've all created in the high school, what we're talking about is all the ancillary components, the business mm -hmm. world that's around. Right. And the analogy we give often is you go and you watch basketball if you play. There are five people who play at any time, but the organization may have a thousand employees. People who are passionate about the game, but there are shop casters, there are web developers, they're marketers, they're logo developers, they're event planners, et cetera. And there's this whole world being developed around esports where people can thrive, grow, gain competencies, and earn incredible livings. Mm -hmm. So it's far beyond just yeah. the play itself. Absolutely, absolutely. And I appreciate that. And I'm glad to hear you. Now, you're involved in the high school side of it when you're speaking now, right? Right. We built the, the curriculum. We funded the curriculum and built the program. That's amazing. So that's what. Um, we would love to talk to you and have you help us out in New Jersey to get started, but uh, or across the country. But uh, you know, that's what I mean. That's what we're all you know chomping at the bit for is to create that opportunity. Um, any, we're we're gonna get cut off like really now-ish. But um, any <laughs> last comments or thoughts? I I, I will uh, definitely pitch. Uh, I think it's is it four forty-five. Your presentation, Kurt and Constance. Are you yeah, all at 445? What room is that? Star, 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 in the Star Foundation. So hopefully we'll just all head over there and uh, continue the party. Um, I thank you all so much. I, I hope we got across the idea that what our biggest you know, goal really here is to build you know, the, the community and to, to do what we can throughout the grades. Um, college has sort of demonstrated efficacy and, you know, and scholarships and programs and the pro circuit is showing that. So now we want to bring it up through the grades and we want to help build that. And we want to create opportunities for kids. Bron? So I just want to mention that resource <coughs> section here, which is the resource section where you can find stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So the I'll bring it back to that slide. All everything, um, our community lives, you know, with the esports edu hashtag as well as in this Discord group. We have a great group of people. We've broken it up, middle, <coughs> high school, resources, college, um, and people from all, like league directors are involved, and it's becoming really a great community. So please join us. If you're not familiar with Discord, it's pretty easy to use. And the chat itself is um, 7.30 Eastern on Thursdays, resuming about August 15th. And we are a global community of people working together, trying to make it happen. Yeah, and real supportive. I mean, we're all trying to do the same thing, you know. And, and the beauty is, we do have people like you know Kurt and Constance and uh, Dylan that you know have started that path. So we're trying to uh, you know learn from them and 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 do what we can do. Thank you.